Hi, this is Vincent, and welcome to Right of Way, a vlog about traffic, transport, and road safety. In today's episode, I'd like to focus on road safety. Driving in the Philippines is a challenge, to say the least. Many people say if you can drive in the Philippines, you can drive anywhere. Philippine motorists have to deal with a whole bunch of hazards and obstacles, such as undisciplined drivers, unmarked traffic cones and barriers, potholes, debris, stalled vehicles, non-motorized road users, and poorly marked construction sites. In ur highly urbanized areas, such as Metro Manila and Metro Cebu, there are many more of these hazards and obstacles, and the dangers increase exponentially. If you think driving during broad daylight is dangerous, all the more at night, when everything that we see plainly in the day becomes nearly invisible in the dark. Think about things like pavement marking, signage, and safety devices, such as traffic cones, bollards, and barricades. Add to that motorcycles, jeepneys, and tricycles that don't have working headlights or taillights. And then we have no, non-motorized road users, like pedicabs, cyclists, and pedestrians, who normally don't have their own lighting systems and therefore blend into the roadscape. Then multiply the danger factor by five or 10 when it's raining. So how dangerous are our roads? There are very few reliable sources of road crash data, but the MMDA does try to put together some data for Metro Manila through its Metro Manila Accident Reporting and Analysis System, or MARAS. The MARAS relies basically on data it collects from the PNP, Police Traffic Precinct Blotter Book, and the MMDA's own command center. Looking to the 2018 MARAS, there were 383 fatal road crashes in Metro Manila, resulting in 394 deaths. Of those crashes, many occur in the dark, in the hours between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. In fact, if we take a look at the last three years, nighttime fatalities happen at a significantly higher rate than during the day. To make a fairer comparison, let's look at those numbers adjusted for the difference in day and night hours, since we're assuming an average of 13 hours of daylight and only 11 hours of darkness. We can see driving at night is significantly more fatal. In 2016, fatal crashes occurred nearly 50% more frequently in the darkness than during the day. For 2017 and 2018, it worsened when it was 110% and 116% respectively more fatal to drive in the dark. And we don't even take into account that there are significantly more cars on the road during day than at night. It's unclear the reasons for the nighttime crashes, but I suspect that in a significant number of cases, low visibility had something to do with it. Unfortunately, this is where the Maris falls short. If we take a look at the reasons for the crashes, in 2016, 96% of the crashes had, quote, no accident factor, close quote, meaning the reason for the crash wasn't recorded or determined. For 2017, no data was presented, and in 2018, nearly all the crashes had undetermined causes. The other thing you'll notice about the way causes of crashes are recorded is that of the 17 possible causes listed, 16 are related to either human factors or mechanical defects of the vehicles. Floods are the only exception. None of the causes on the list refer to things like poor road design, hazards or obstructions, inclement weather, or poor visibility. So the crash will almost always be recorded as the fault of the driver or the vehicle, and never the fault of the road designer, the road manager, or the construction site manager. So how can we make our roads safer at night and in bad weather? Visibility is the key. If you can't see it, you can't avoid it. We must make all the road elements visible at night. Otherwise, it's almost like driving blind. Street lighting plays a big role in safety in nighttime driving. 
but where there is no street lighting, we have to find another way to make things visible at night. That's right, I'm talking about retroreflectivity. So let's talk to John Valinan from 3M Philippines and talk about their road safety solutions that can help make our roads safer at night. So John, tell us a little bit about some of the 3M road safety solutions that you have. Let's talk about uh, pavement marking. It's very important because this is where you follow. It, it guides you uh, which uh, lane you take and where the road ends at the edge. Okay, these are important for promotion of safety. And so what does uh, 3M have in terms of pavement markings uh, that will help make the road more visible? 3M have 3M elements. This is the third ingredient of which are added into thermoplastic applications. Basically, thermoplastic are composed with the thermo thermoplastic material. It's a molten plastic, and then they'll, add, they'll be added with uh, glass beads. Glass beads provide the light re retro reflection during the daytime and nighttime as well. 3M elements will provide retro reflection during wet seasons or uh, with uh, uh, water covered pavement. So, so John, when, you, when we look at the pavement markings on the roads, uh, that's actually not paint. It's actually thermoplastic, you say. And the first element you add to that would be the glass beads, which give it, uh, you were saying, retroreflectivity during normal conditions. Yes. Um, and then if you want additional retroreflectivity, let's say in wet conditions, you would add these, uh, these 3M, 3M elements. elements. Yes. Okay, so that helps enhance visibility during wet weather. Yes. Okay. Um, in terms of pavement markings, John, it's very important because it, especially at night when it's uh, raining, uh, many times you can't even see if you're, let's say, on a, on a two-lane road in, in, in a rural area, you can't see the edges of the road. You can't see if the, the road is uh, bending to the right or bending to the left. Yes. Um, so aside from the glass beads and the 3M elements, uh, what other road safety solutions do you have for pavement markings? Well, um, we do have stay mark. Uh, it's a durable tape that we, we use. Uh, uh, this, this looks like a huge roll of tape. Yes. Alternatively, uh, we use this tape for easy application. We don't have to use uh, boilers to melt plastic. Uh -huh. We'll just apply this uh, on so, the road. So it's just like laying down tape on the road? Yes. And, and, and how sticky is this? I mean, is this something that will be just peel off after a few days of, in wet weather? Oh no, these are really sticky material. And uh, it's waterproof, it sticks on any surface. It will last about a year or a year or a half. Okay, and, and this is what you would use then for, uh, let's say, your median markings, your lane markings, and perhaps your, even your edge markings. Oh yes. It has that uh, high reflectivity because of these uh, profiles okay. on them. So it raises that uh, reflective elements higher. And is this, is this also retroflective in all types of weather conditions as well? In all types, especially during uh, wet weather. Okay, so even if it's, let's say, uh, the, the rains are coming down strong, let's say you have a few millimeters of water on top of it, it's yes. still, you can still see it at night? Yes. This is far more visible uh, compared with the normal uh, pavement markings that we have okay. right now. What other uh, 3M uh, road safety solutions uh, do you have? Let's talk about median markers. Uh -huh. Median markers are, again, used for um, visibility of the, the edge of the road again, edge of the road. So they are, they are placed at the sides of the railings, side of the barriers. Okay, so this would be used, let's say, if you have a guardrail. A guardrail. So, so that uh, if you're approaching the, the curve, you can see the guardrail and, and where the edge of the road is. Yes, normally what uh, we have here are bended metal. You'll uh -huh. see them most of the time. These are bended metal and uh, a, a retroreflective material is pasted on them. Most often, these are not the type that is really reflective. From, from far, uh, they're probably using type 1 materials, which is uh, very less ref reflective. Tell us what else you have, John. Okay, so these are, these are road studs. Yes. These are placed on top of the roads, and again, it works as uh, demarcation, lane marking, at the edge, at the middle. And uh, it, it has that raised profile, 
uh -huh. gives you a, a thud and uh, especially for uh, letting the drivers know that they are you're shifting lanes. Yeah, so, so I've noticed that some of these road studs are used not only to provide additional visibility for the lane markings or even the edge markings, uh, but as you say, uh, as you drive over them, uh, they give a thud yes. to sort of alert you that you're crossing. Right, and as, uh, it wakes you up. <laughs> this comes in really important at uh, curvy areas or high-risk areas, accident-prone areas. What I did notice, though, uh, in a certain area in Makati, they have these road studs that are actually LED, so they're actually lights. So, so as you approach them, it kind of looks like a, a runway of an airport. Uh, what do you think about these? Because these are highly visible. What do you think about those LED road studs? They are, uh, yes, these are the modern uh, methods that they use now. Uh, it does help a, a lot too. Uh, but the problem with this is it's electronics and normally electronics won't last long. They'll probably be good for a year or two. But after that, when they die, they'll have to dig it up and replace it. And a passive reflector will still be there. They'll have, uh, they'll, you'll see a straight enough line, unlike solar LEDs where they have uh, random lights coming in. And uh, it's probably adding to the confusion. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other uh, road safety solutions. We talked about um, road studs and, and uh, pavement markings, but signage, we, we talked, John, a little bit about signage in our very first episode. Um, and 3M, I know, makes a lot of uh, retroreflective sheeting and, and films. Yes, this is uh, a retroreflective retro material. Again, it's used for the signs, it's used for uh, chevron marks, it's used for barrier marks. It does really help, you know, especially in uh, in our situations where there's a lot of blind curves, mm. we, yeah. chevron will really help a lot. So the chevron is used to indicate that there's a curve in the road? Yes. And if you uh, do see some, it has to be a type 11 material. You know, you could see them from far, 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 far away. Uh, How far away can you see something like this if, you're, if your headlight hits it? 500 meters will see a, a dot, and wow. as you come closer you'll yeah. see the red direction. So that, that really plays uh, an important role in roads that are, uh, let's say, a lot of twists and curves, uh, mountain roads, uh, to alert the driver that there's a curve ahead. Right. So let's see some of these road safety solutions in action, John, shall we? Yes, let's go. John and I will use some of the 3M safety products we discussed to do a mock-up of what a road would look like when it's made properly visible at night. This includes stay marked pavement markings, road studs with cat's eyes, median markings, and a retroreflective chevron using 3M's high-intensity prismatic sticker. But before we do the mock-up, this is what the street looks like during the day and at night. As you'll notice, during the day, there's no problem in seeing the street or the orange barrier. But at night, things change drastically and visibility is very limited. After we did the day and night drive through John and I laid down the various road safety products we had discussed earlier. On the top is the unmarked road, while the bottom shows us what the road would look like with proper retroreflective markings. You'll notice that all that is needed is a car's headlight to make the different road elements visible. Even without street lighting, we can see the barricade, the edge and lane markings, the median markings, and chevron. Lastly, we compare what a traffic enforcer would look like with and without the proper safety gear. In the top video, John is only wearing an orange safety vest without retroreflectivity. While in the bottom video, we can see that John is a lot more visible when his vest has retroreflective strips added. This could mean the difference between injury and safety for the traffic enforcer. So John, we just saw how important retroreflectivity is to visibility at night. Without pavement markings or signage that are retroreflective, it's really hard to see the different elements of the road, especially if you think about uh, on rainy evenings, for example. But what I've noticed, John, is that as you drive around not only Metro Manila, but around the country, you don't see a lot of these products 
on the road. You don't see retroreflective pavement markings. You don't see retroreflective signage or chevrons. Why do you think this is so, John? Yes, this is uh, very sad because I think that road safety was not planned or uh, was not included during the plan. So it's, I don't know, it's, is it um, probably because they're cutting on budget? There's no budget or simply because they, people don't know that there, the standard exists on uh, this kind of things. Maybe you don't want to say it, John, but I'll say it. And that is uh, because, for example, for example, when we talk about public roads, uh, public roads go to the lowest bidder. And usually when it goes to the lowest bidder, they, in my opinion, they sacrifice road safety. So what they do is probably use inferior products. Um, so they'll use these little, what are supposed to be retroreflective road studs or thermoplastic beading or whatever, but in the end, they're actually not. And, and what happens is we sacrifice road safety. And I think that's why it's important that companies like 3M are pushing the envelope in terms of developing new technologies um, and really trying to uh, push these standards on road safety. And I think I, I have to recognize, I'll, I recognize 3M for, for being a leader in this area. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about, about what 3M's philosophy is as far as road safety is concerned and some of the technologies that you've been developing over the years. Well, at 3M, we use science to work for us, especially uh, on these applications, making sure that uh, road safety is uh, our priority, providing materials that it's easy for drivers or road users uh, are guided, no, and uh, as as you as we have seen, experienced uh, uh, during the night time, that it's really good for drivers to see how visible these uh, these materials are, and of course, I could drive confidently and guided by it. But when you think about what you give up in exchange for poor quality road safety products, we're talking about lives, aren't we, John? Yes, and uh, it's not expensive, uh, actually, considering the longe longevity of these materials, how durable they are. It becomes inexpensive at the end of it. And then, when you when you take into account the lives that you save, right. or the injuries that you avoid, yes. when you have a high quality road safety products, then then the cost becomes minimal. Yes. Well, thanks a lot, John, for showing us these road safety solutions. Uh, it's really important uh, to see the road at night, and you can see how well these 3M products illuminate the road and make all the different elements of the road visible at night. So thank you again, John, for spending uh, time with us. Yes, my pleasure, and uh, I was thrilled doing this with you, and uh, many people we have, were able to show these materials that many people don't know how it works. So. Thank you. Thank you, John. One thing that John and I talked about off cam is the need for increased visibility of large vehicles like trucks, buses, and trailers. Conspicuity markings, such as retroreflectorized tape, can help increase the visibility of large vehicles at night and give other motorists a sense of the size of such a vehicle. As you can see, a truck with conspicuity markings can easily be seen in the dark. This is important, for example, when large vehicles are parked on the side of the road or are moving slowly. A motorist can approach the vehicle with caution and avoid getting into a crash. The nice thing about vehicles marked with conspicuity tape is that even if its own lighting system is not on, the vehicle can be seen in the dark in the headlights of other vehicles. Visibility is everything at night. We cannot compromise on road safety, especially at night and in bad weather. Too many people are getting injured or dying on our roads. Everything on the road and all road users must be visible in the dark. This means motorized vehicles must have operating headlights, taillights, and brake lights, while non-motorized users should make the effort to make themselves visible too. And all absolutely all traffic control devices, 
such as pavement markings, signage, cement and plastic, barriers and dividers should either be lit or made retro reflective. Our road designers and managers should not treat road safety as a good to have. It must be integrated into the cost of construction and maintenance. And again, this is most especially important in the dark and in bad weather. Quality road safety solutions should meet, or better yet, exceed global safety standards. The safety and lives of people are at stake. I'd like to thank John and our, his colleagues at 3M Philippines for sharing with us their expertise and road safety solutions. We'd also like to thank our friends at Philinvest Alabang and Philinvest City for allowing us to use their private roads for our road safety demonstration. We'd also like to thank ASEC Construction for lending us their newest truck for the conspicuity tape segment. And lastly, a shout out and thanks to Wicked Adobo for that wicked soundtrack. If you have any comments, questions, photos, or videos that you'd like to share with us, you can email us at rightofway at rappler.com or send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at rightofwayph. Until then, this is Vincent, and I'm out of here. Stay safe on the road, guys.